Hey everybody, it's ASIC Eric back in the garage. Uh, today we are going to tackle all the trash in this guy. Um, so we're going to do a flow coat on the front of the car here. I'm trying to decide if I want to do these A-pillars at the same time or uh, whatever the heck you call these things. Um, the passenger side's a little chunky. I think this side's a little better. I don't know, we'll see. I gotta go along and look. Um, I already did a little bit of work on this. Um, there's a big old chunk of dirt right there. I don't know if you can see that. It was sticking up out of the paint quite a bit. Um, it's one of those big black chunks of yuck. There's another thing right there, if you can see that. Stuff like that. I'm not gonna be able to get that out. That's too far down in there. But So I'm basically looking at just this stuff at the top here. So I'm going to sand this down with 600 and then flow coat it. Um, and then the front here, oh, that lighting's terrible. Let me get some light here. All right, there we go. That's better. Since we've got a, a run right here, we need to get out. It's not very big, but big enough. And then this whole area here, hopefully you can see it's just got this weird texture to it. There's this really mild sag that runs through it right there. You can see it right there. Uh, so I'm gonna work on that, and there's uh, where is it? Here. This one I might leave. I'm not sure you're able to see that one. I might go after that a little bit, but I'm not gonna work too hard. That's under the wiring harness and the clutch, so you're not gonna be able to see that anyway. I don't think. Uh, so this guy's not in too bad a shape. Um, much less dirt here. We'll run right there too. But that's again, you're not gonna really be able to see that. Um, so for the most part, it's getting rid of that run right there and just getting the trash out of this guy. Uh, that's the plan for today. Um, temperature's warmed up a little bit. Uh, it's going to be in the low mid-70s. Um, hopefully mid-70s, not just low 70s. I'm also taking the clear coat, sticking that outside again, do that trick again. That seemed to work. And since it's colder than it was last time I was here, I'm going to use the accelerator this time. Um, Trying to get this down as good as I can. Um, I've cleaned out the garage here, got rid of all the stuff that was along the wall here. Uh, I'm gonna hose everything down good in here before I start. Uh, see how that does. Put a new paint suit on. I'm gonna do everything I can to try and keep the trash out of this. Um, short of building you know, plastic all around the car. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully it'll be okay. And that's kind of the reason I'm debating not doing these areas. Just do small areas at a time to kick up less dust. Um, so I might not do those. This is really the most important thing as you open up the hood and see all this crap in here, which I don't really like. Anyway, uh, one other thing, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for uh, your uh, say hello notes to Pops. Um, it's very kind of you, appreciate that. Um, I do pass those along to, to him every chance I get. Uh, so if I say I passed the message along, I actually did. I'm not just saying that. Um, and he says, thank you. Um, hopefully we'll see Pops again here pretty soon. Um, our stay at home order here in our county has been extended all the way through the end of May. Um, so we're not gonna be going anywhere, but they might relax things. You know, and, and for Pops and I, it's more about just me keeping them safe more than anything else. Um, neither one of us are sick. We're, you know, we're not really going out and doing anything. We're, you know, getting all our stuff delivered to the house. My wife is super, super diligent about cleaning everything that comes in the house. So we're pretty sure we're, you know, we're doing everything we can to stay safe. Uh, but, you know, my parents are both up there in the age and I don't want to do anything to put them at risk. Uh, so that's more than anything else, right? So we'll, we're kind of playing it on our own ear on when we think we're ready to start working together again. But anyway, uh, thanks everybody for that. Um, I'm not going to bring you along for all the sanding stuff here. Um, I know uh, I'll put put in the video here. Um, I, I forget how to pronounce your channel name, but uh, had suggested getting one of those uh, tungsten blocks um, to scrape all of this stuff off that the gunman used. Um, that was a great idea. Thank you. Um, the only place I could find that was from Spray Guns Direct. I ordered it from them two weeks ago. I still don't have it. Um, so I'm kind of out of luck there. Uh, so I'm just going to do my best. So I'm going to use something really hard and rigid like a, 
um, a stirring stick or something to work on this because um, again when you're you're trying to denib and uh, take big uh, runs and stuff out you want something firm right so you're not digging into all the surrounding material at least this is how I understand it um, so I'm not going to be using soft blocks or anything like that there here this area I'll probably use the small dura block because um, I want something firm there not doesn't doesn't have to be rock firm I'm just trying to smooth this out a little bit um, this only has one coat of clear clear on it it's got three coats of tinted clear and one coat of clear so I, I can't really go to town on this and just um, cut and buff this um, because I'll end up going down into the uh, tinted clear and again for for those of you not following along um, I've had so many problems with runs and sags and everything that I don't want to put three coats of tinted clear and then two or three coats of clear on top of that so I've known since the beginning I was just going to put one coat of clear and then I was going to flow coat everything um, just to minimize my chances of putting a run in the tinted clear because a run in the tinted clear is game over right I mean, that's what that's what happened here but it's down in that little corner there so I don't think it matters um, anyway I'm going to stop rambling and start sanding if there's anything interesting I'll bring you along for the ride otherwise we'll see you when the sanding's done all right so we're going to do the before and after here so I just took this out of the drum room I uh, notice there it says 64 degrees and it's 64 degrees all right so that's our starting temperature that's nice these two agree with each other pretty well interesting that it's the same temperature inside the drum room as it is outside. So we're going to leave these outside for a few hours and see what difference it makes. All right, we've gone over this with 600 wet. I started with 600 dry. I found the 600 wet worked better. Um, I just basically looked for any spots you know, like this kind of thing um, here. I just try to level them out as much as I could. Some like this, I can't really do anything more than that. I'm just digging down into the uh, tinted clear if I try to dig that out anymore. Stuff like this here. Um, can't really do much more with those. So I'm not going to go crazy with it because I don't want to burn through like this. Um, now this area here is going to be black, so it doesn't really matter. But down here somewhere was going to stay red, so that's a little iffy right there maybe. But... Um, so you can see everywhere it's dull, um, has been sanded. Um, I got most of the trash out, which is good. Um, so that's that's nice. Um, so we'll let this dry and then take another good look at it. You can see these little spots here. So again, I'm not going to try and go for perfection here because I know my next coat's probably not going to be pristine either. Um, but now we're going to turn our attention to this run. Um, interestingly enough, Gabe over at Motivated Painters made a video on taking runs out with a razor blade, which I have done before, but he just put posted that today, so that was funny. Um, so I watched that this morning, so uh, we'll go. This is not a very big run, so I don't think it's gonna be too hard to get out, but let me get you on the tripod. We get a fresh razor blade, and we'll go for it. Right, let's see, hopefully I've got you right where you can see that run there. So we're gonna try. I don't know how well this is gonna show up, but Super gentle here. Yeah, that's gonna dig into the edge there. So sometimes it helps to put a little bend in the razor blade like that. Try and focus the well, I don't even have very good light here myself. Boy, that's just not much of a run at all. There's not really anything even to dig into here. That's funny. Wow. All right, so there's not even enough there to hit that with a razor blade, so I'm just going to get my paint stick here. The 600 on it. I'm going to attack it with a paint stick, see how that goes. Knock that down a little bit. That's a really slight run, so it's not much going on there at all.
See, that thing's almost gone already. It has got a little bit of tinted clear in it, so can't get too crazy with this. But And again, I only have one coat of clear, so I can't really dig into this too hard. There's a little bit of stuff going on right there. I don't want to, again, dig too hard on that. So I'm mostly focusing on where that spot was right there. again but in case anyone's wondering no this is not a how-to video because I am not a painter so I was trying to level that out to the point where you're not gonna be able to see it so much anymore how's that look to you it's right here there's not much left going there so I don't want to go too much more on this I'm just trying to focus on this little tip a little bubble down at the bottom there can't have very much clear left here. get the Dura block here with the 600 and sand the rest of this guy down. All right, I think we're done here. Um, gone over all this 600 wet and a gray scotch bright pad. Trying to get rid of all the shiny spots. It's a little tricky on this uh, seam sealer edge here because if you sand too close the paint comes off really easily. Um, so I don't want to get too aggressive. Like that, leaving these white edges everywhere. Um, so I don't have a perfect adhesion edge on the front there. Hopefully that won't be a problem. I think everything else is good. I'm going to soft edge this thing because I don't need to paint it all the way to the top. Do a soft edge along the bottom here. Uh, so this guy's pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to get uh, get the car masked up and then uh, hose everything down in here and get ready to paint.
maybe some really fine trash in it, but nothing, nothing big. Let me throw this one or two up there, one of the berries. This looks pretty nice. I'm trying to put that coat on fairly light. We don't want any runs here. We'll let that cook for, say, 15 minutes, and we'll hit it with the next one. Since this question has come up before, so there's the exhaust fan there and the uh, exhaust filters. And then Kitty Corner, over there is the entry door to the garage, and I've got the filter bank there. Um, when I was cleaning up in here and getting ready, that top filter fell out. So it was pulling in all kinds of pollen into the room. That's what that thing was there. We have these uh, black willows, and their pollen is like these little fuzz balls. So they were just floating all over the place in here. So I opened up the thing here so it gets the most airflow possible. I tried to suck all that stuff out, but there's a little bit of it floating around here. So anyway, so we got a cross flow booth here basically. All right, I got a couple more minutes and then we'll hit this. Oh, on this guy, uh, that little thing, I took a pair of tweezers and tried to pull it out. No, I didn't want to destroy the paint, so and my hands are super shaky, so I couldn't get it. But everything's looking pretty nice. All right, I'm going to try to put this on a little heavier, hopefully without putting any arms on. going on, even though that was a heavier coat, it came out really peely. Interesting. Go over here. So, I'm hoping it lays down a little bit. This looks pretty nice here. Oh! Maybe it's just that one spot. I'm gonna... I might put a little more clear right here. It looks a little dry. Looks pretty good everywhere else. Definitely mixed up too much clear. All right. It has been a couple of hours since this went on. So I thought we'd give you the lay of the land here. See, this is... You probably couldn't hear me in the video before. I was saying there's small amounts of trash in it. No, no big chunkies. Um, which is good. This would be a piece of cake to cut and buff out. That's a little chunky right there, but um, if I can get this kind of finish all the time, I'm happy, all right? Um, let me get the light over here so you can see how this came out. So I took this thing out of here when I was painting because it's just so dusty and dirty and I didn't want this stuff blowing everywhere, but uh, first things first, didn't really do much good on that run. It's still there. It's not as bad as it was, but, but, and that sag is still there, but way less than it was before. A chunk of crap right there landed in it. Um, that came out all right where I took that piece of pollen out of there. So all in all, this came out really nice. Look how, how nice the texture came out. It's definitely better than it was. Uh, I don't think I got any new runs anywhere, which is good. So yeah, I'm real happy with this. This is uh, 
easily cut and buffable. Um, I could just leave that alone probably and just not even worry about it. Um, I don't think you're ever going to be able to see the sags and stuff in there. You know, there's just those couple of little dirt, excuse me, um, dirt nibs, which I might go after. I might not. We'll see. Um, the main reason I wanted to get this done right now is because I couldn't start putting the car back together until I got this finished. Because um, I couldn't put all the brake booster and all this stuff in there and then come and paint it later. So, got that done. Um, it dawned on me um, as I was editing the video. Some of you guys and gals may not know what I'm talking about when I talk about soft edges. Um, so, this paint's still wet, probably. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little sticky, but it's pretty much gone. But if you look here, you can see the tape doesn't go... It's not stuck to the surface, right? So that's just a piece of tape that's folded over on itself. Um, you can see here the, where the tape is folded over on itself. Well, I hope you can. Um, so that allows the tape to stay off the surface. So everywhere around here, um, it's like this, right, where the, the tape's not actually stuck down. So theoretically, when you pull this off, I didn't do a double edge here, or soft edge here. I was hoping the tape would just kind of stick up a little bit, but I switched everything to soft edges after that. So I think it's probably safe to start pulling this tape off right now. I waited uh, for a long time to try and let the clear settle as much as it could because I didn't want to pull all this stuff off and dump a bunch of dirt in it when I did it. So let me get the tape off and we'll take a look at it. I left all uh, this tape and stuff in here because I got to reach way under there and it's still a little sticky here, so I don't want to do that, but uh, there you go. Looks pretty nice. So here you can see the soft edge I was talking about. All right, so I scuffed it all the way up here. Again, this is going to be black, but there's no edge right here. You can't feel anything. So when I come along to paint the black, I can just scuff, scuff that up and there won't be any line there. Um, a little bit of a line right there. It's a little harder of a soft edge. But all across here is where I had that soft edge. And you can see it's a little dull right there because I scuffed it. But can't really see much of anything going on there. I can just polish that up a little bit. Um, did the same thing along the bottom here. Right here, you can't see anything. I think we can see the where it was scuffed right there. All right. So I just have to polish that up a little bit, and that's good. Um, yeah. These edges had a hard edge on them here. I did a soft edge here along with a seam sealer. So again, you can't can't see anything there. There's no edge. Um, there's a hard edge across the top of this, but you can't see it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Very nice. I'm real happy with that. So way less trash than before. I'm not trashless. Um, still some larger chunks up in here, but for the most part that was good. Um, as I was saying before, this is cut and buffable, um, where that other heavy chunky stuff was just no good. Um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I did a lot of things differently this time. Um, really spent a lot of time cleaning. Uh, one experiment I did here, which I wasn't sure if it was going to work out, was I actually reused the plastic from before. Um, so this is plastic that I painted on earlier. Um, but, you know, the paint doesn't seem to come off it, but I did clean it really well. But I, you know, I'm running out of, of plastic here, so I didn't want to uh, keep using up all my plastic just for that. So that worked out okay, luckily. But uh, I think the biggest things are um just making sure everything's wet here cleaning all this garbage out of here um i left this thing running for a long time with the this open there's a lot more airflow when this thing's open versus when it's closed because i need to get new filters um and the new paint suit so i did a lot of things differently which ones mattered which one didn't i don't know but um i'm pretty happy with how it came out so all right uh that's gonna wrap this video up um again i wish you could see the true color of this thing because it looks like crap in this camera. Um, it's really, really pretty. But that's it. All right, so thanks, everybody. We will catch you on the next one later.